Amy Grigorovich is an early career sustainability professional, having graduated with honours in a Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science, and a Bachelor of Arts, Human Geography, in 2021. Amy currently works with the Yarra Rangers Council in Victoria, Australia, as their Energy Resilient Communities Officer. With experience in environmental science and community advocacy, Amy is passionate about ecologically sustainable and equitable societal development, helping facilitate community engagement in local environmental projects. Amy discusses how the Yarra Rangers Council seeks to overcome extreme weather events and a changing climate to create sustainable and energy resilient communities. Hi everybody, so um, as Manuela said, my name is Amy Grigorovich um, and I am the Energy Resilient Communities Officer for Yarra Rangers Council. Um, and I'll be taking you through some of the work we're doing in this field. But before I begin, um, I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the um, traditional custodians of the land on which we do most of our work um, here in the Yarra Rangers and pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. So the Yarra Rangers is located on the eastern edge of Melbourne here in Victoria, Australia, um, being home to over 150,000 people and covering approximately um, two and a half thousand square kilometres. It stretches from the densely populated outer suburbs um, into the foothills, agricultural valleys and forested areas of the Great Dividing Range. Our beautiful landscape lends itself to productive agricultural and tourism industries with over 4.5 million tourists visiting annually. Here at Yarra Rangers Council, we recognise that climate change is a global challenge um, requiring a unified response that helps communities and our local economy respond uh, to climate change, both mitigating the impacts of climate change and also adapting to those already happening. Uh, so in 2020, we released our Livable Climate Plan, which provides a framework for this unified response um, across the current decade. And it includes uh, the key principles of reducing emissions with as many co-benefits as possible, demonstrating responsible climate leadership and integrating broader, broader principles of uh, sustainability into everything that we do. Importantly, it also highlights the need to prepare for a changing climate. So this is vitally important for our region as our beautiful landscape comes in hand with some pretty extreme weather. Um, although this extreme weather has become more common for our communities in the Yarra Ranges, the experiences of June 2021 were unlike anything else. So we were the epicentre of a storm that swept across Victoria, impacting people across our local government area and influencing our thinking around emergency management and energy resilience ever since. Our residents titled the storm event the night that trees fell from the sky. So we had approximately 25,000 trees fall down, damaging buildings, blocking roads and wiping out power lines. We had more than a thousand properties, um, homes and businesses extensively damaged by the storm debris, many of which have been deemed unlivable since. Um, with another 5,000 impacted by floods. And of those impacted, more than 3,000 homes had no power or internet for more than a month. The impact of this network failure was nicely captured by a quote in DELP's network uh, resilience review released in May of 2022 with a resident from uh, the Warburton Yarra Junction area stating that at their house, no power meant no light, lost food storage, no water, no septic, no internet, mobile phone was also out, so no communication. No power meant no FPOS and no ATM, and no power to charge phone to use Apple Pay or bank transfer. And the Telstra network was also out, so most mobiles were useless. So cash economy, but who carries cash these days? So our experiences around extreme weather have truly influenced our approach to meeting the priority areas in our livable climate plan. These include renewable energy implementation, having resilient community buildings, um, a zero emission council fleet, uh, having sustainable design in all of our assets and employing climate thinking for all of our strategies. So as part of these priorities with regards to renewable energy, to date we have installed over 1.4 megawatts of solar on our council buildings um, and furthermore we've recently joined the Victorian Energy Collaboration, which has allowed all of our council buildings to be 100% renewably powered by wind farms in Western Victoria through a power purchasing agreement, which we're super excited about. 
With regards to having resilient buildings, in early 2021, we deployed three batteries at the Yarra Glen Memorial Hall, the Memo in Hillsville and the Yarra Aquatic Centre in Yarra Junction. With the Yarra Glen Memorial Hall and the Recreation Reserve um, surrounding our Aquatic Centre and Yarra Junction, both being activated as community relief centres following the June storm events of last year, providing shower and power sites to those who could get there and um, who didn't have power at their own homes. So more recently, the Yarra Rangers has been successful with several grant submissions, um, welcoming support to provide climate resilient buildings for our community. So these works involve installing a combination of batteries, um, solar generator plug-in points and employing energy efficiency measures to improve their energy um, resilience of these buildings during emergency events, whilst also reducing running costs um, during normal days. So the state government's Growing Suburbs Fund has provided funding for nine buildings to be upgraded and more recently, the federal government's Preparing Australian Communities Fund has allowed for another 21 community sites to be upgraded. And these buildings, again, are community hubs um, of activity, places where emergency relief activities can be staged um, and others that can be central points of communication in, and information during times of need. We have also um, more recently expanded our work portfolio to include looking at how we can connect those resilient buildings into precincts that act as microgrids. So we see microgrids as being localised electricity networks that can be used um, as part of or completely separate to the main energy grid. They utilise various energy sources like solar batteries, and generators and um, can supply power when communities are cut off from the main network, such as during storms or fire, um, but also during scheduled maintenance and things like that. Uh, in this kind of innovative field of microgrid development, the form that a microgrid um, could take is quite unclear and very context specific. So a microgrid could power a handful of essential community facilities, for example, relief centres, um, your emergency services, local grocers, petrol station, comms, towers, et cetera. Um, but it could also power the whole town year round, depending on the context of that local area. So as a result of this uncertainty um, in the microgrid sector, Yarra Rangers Council has engaged in a couple of microgrid feasibility studies that are helping us understand the potential for having energy resilient community precincts um, centred around specific community buildings. So in late 2021, uh, we started on the Active Energy Precincts project, um, which I'll touch on in a moment. We've also been talking with DELP and Osnet about their energy resilience studies, where they're looking at 24 townships across Victoria that are weak points in the transmission networks um, and working out different solutions to make uh, various buildings and little precincts more uh, resilient and adaptable to climate change. And of those 24 towns, because of our unfortunate experience with the June storm events, six of them fall in the Yarra Ranges. And excitingly, which I'll touch on at the very end, we're also about to launch another microgrid feasibility study in Monbulk this time, um, titled the Resilient Energy Precinct Project. So we've got a lot happening in this space, which is very exciting. So for our first microgrid project, um, the Active Energy Precincts Project, it's a collaboration between Monash University, Birdwood Energy, and three local government areas, including Yarra Ranges, um, the Surf Coast and Wodonga local government areas. So in each LGA, the project team are looking at the role of microgrids powering community hubs in two towns. So for us, that's Hillsville, um, as shown on the left, with our microgrid hub centered around um, our local hall, the library building and our shopping precinct. And then on the right hand side, we're also looking at Yarra Junction with the microgrid hub centered around our recreation reserve, which has like a sporting oval, um, the aquatic center, and it's right over the road from our main shopping kind of strip and little precinct. So for this first microgrid feasibility study, stakeholder engagement has been vital to learn what is possible and what our local energy priorities should be when it comes to microgrids. So one-on-one -on -one meetings um, with stakeholders have uh, confirmed what those energy priorities should be, whether they're around cutting energy costs, um, getting to net zero as fast as possible, or that energy resilience factor. 
and to decide what key community buildings should be included in a microgrid and what should be kept online during storm and bushfire events. We sent out a survey uh, to residents and small business owners, which has also helped us understand those energy priorities and the types of action that people would like to see in regards to energy resilience. So overwhelmingly, survey respondents um, were taking action to improve their own homes, so putting solar and batteries on, but we're also really interested to see solutions um, be implemented at a community level. So that collective factor has been really important for our local communities. More recently, um, we've had some focus groups which have helped us understand what educational information was missing from the community with regards to microgrid solutions because they can be quite complex. Um, and excitingly, in about two weeks, we've got um, our first of a community workshop, which will give the project team an opportunity to collaborate with community members around what they see being the best model um, for their specific preferences around participating in a microgrid solution. So we hope that will be really informative and exciting. So working with community groups um, and community members has been vital in our energy resilience works as shown with the Active Energy Precincts project. So as I mentioned, we've had countless conversations with various community groups and um, reps in the two towns, not limited to those highlighted here. Um, but they include the people like um, our recreational bodies, like so like bowling clubs, um, football, netball, tennis, cricket, et cetera, our local libraries, senior citizens, um, some of our larger commercial sites in town, but also um, our community energy groups. And further along with that, it has also been a specific highlight of our project to work on the feasibility studies in collaboration with two other councils, so Wodonga and Surf Coast. Um, as they've got differing community energy priorities and local demographics. So sharing our challenges and wins, um, I think have truly helped us all progress our thinking in this space. And finally, um, although the microgrid studies are the responsibility of the sustainability team here at Yarra Rangers Council, collaboration across um, teams have been super vital to our learnings and successes to date. So the emergency management team, for example, have helped us understand the definition of energy resilience in reality. Um, the design and place team have ensured that these projects fit in with what else is happening in our towns, like urban design frameworks. Um, and community and economic development teams have helped us make those connections with groups that we previously had not engaged with. So um, to bring it all together, uh, we are about to kick off another microgrid study in partnership with Monash University and Birdwood Energy, again, titled the Resilient Energy Precinct Project in Monbolk, which is another township in our LGA. Um, this time, our microgrid study is centered around a living and learning center, which has a childcare, library, um, council information, kind of all of those type of things, and our recreation reserve which both act as community hubs during emergency events. So we'll be installing um, batteries and solar on the buildings that don't already have it, ensuring that they are complementary to having a generator plugged in if needed. Um, and we also aim to physically connect the living and learning center, which is the building circled there on the left, um, to the recreational pavilion to form a mini microgrid with virtual connections for commercial benefits out to the wider town. And of course, um, collaboration will again be vital in ensuring this project gains a social license to operate and community buy-in. So what's next? Um, we'll be bringing all of our learnings and challenges from microgrids and battery and solar deployment, um, our use of generators and energy efficiency measures alongside um, all of the community collaboration that's happening into a draft energy transition plan for 2023 to 2040. This plan will um, detail our transition away from fossil fuels, build, building upon previous council strategies and plans. And it will detail our challenges and learnings from investigating um, different innovative solutions, such as microgrids, but also other exciting projects that we have going at the moment, which include um, a biochar facility being installed in our LGA just recently, community solar parks that are being investigated, um, we're currently developing our council electric vehicle fleet strategy and many more.
And just a quick note, I know Chris is going to talk about it a bit later, um, but I wanted to highlight that we're not the only ones thinking about uh, energy resilience in our local government area with community groups from various townships also investigating their own solutions in partnership with council, but also sometimes independently to improve their uh, local energy supply during emergency events. So overall, we know that um, we will continue to be exposed to extreme weather as the climate continues to change, but we hope that um, these energy resilience measures and community collaboration will help us mitigate those impacts and aid our ability to recover in a fast and equi equitable way.